Super League. Sin City has become a Jewish city. A miracle come true. People can get a complete Jewish education. Let's hear at Chabad. Mazel Tov. Chabad has really found its place in Vegas. Mazel Tov. Lighting the menorah. And more Mazel Tov. I am very, very happy to say. For 25 years. 25 years. 25 years. Chabad has been thriving in Las Vegas. A great part of the Jewish community. <laughs> what is Chabad? Chabad is an organization with a heart. Literally, Chabad means Chachma Bin Adas, which means wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. When people see Chabad, they think, well, that's not for me because, you know, I'm not orthodox. They're too religious for me. You know, they're really going to look down for me. It's not true. You may be conservative, you may be reformed, you may be agnostic, you may even claim that you're atheist. But we believe that we are here, that you still have that same neshama, the same soul as I have. I may be a little bit more observant, but your, your soul is as Jewish as my soul. Once we teach them, they realize that Chabad is mainly geared for the non-Orthodox. If I was looking for the Orthodox, I would have stayed in New York. I came here for the non-observant ones to try to make them more in touch with the Judaism. They have the soul, they have the spirit. Our job is just to try to encourage them, taking one more step up the ladder to have a stronger relationship, a stronger commitment to God. <laughs> The Rebbe uh, said we should explore opening up uh, Chabad in Las Vegas. I knew it was going to be a challenge, and I figured it was a challenge that I was looking to take up on. But it was a community that then had 30,000 people that really didn't have the strong outreach uh, presence. People were saying, you know, we need Chabad to come here, we need more Yiddish guy, we need uh, leadership classes for adults, we need things for kids, we need kosher, we need mikvah. And that's why I said yes, I was happy to do that. And we moved here in December of 1990 to open up the first Chabad Center. Well, I was here, of course, when the rabbi came to town. I think it was about 1990. And I saw him take a very um, foreign concept, as far as we in Las Vegas were concerned, a Chabad, and turn it into a wonderful religious institution. People didn't think that there was a place for an organization of Chabad, which is more traditional. There'll be no interest, there'll be no support whether it's financially, people would not be interested. Well, boy, they were wrong. The very first time that I met Rabbi Harlan, I said there is no way in Las Vegas that they would ever accept the Chabad. Well, I am very, very happy to say that I have been proven wrong on all counts. Las Vegas itself must have been a daunting place for a Chabad rabbi to come to in the first place. What they've managed to do is to transform Judaism and people's feelings about Judaism in this entire city. Chabad has really found its place in Vegas. As a matter of fact, it is thriving in Las Vegas. So that goes to show you it's effective. One of the things I noticed right away was the lack of kosher availability. There was no kosher food, so we'd rely on friends bringing us kosher food, you know, in uh, ice packs. The Jewish families would have to get together and bus to California uh, to get all the needs that nowhere in Vegas provided. So I reached out to some of the supermarkets in town and they were, there was a lot of hesitation in the beginning. It was like a new thing to them. But after it took a little pushing, and a little convincing, they first started off with once a week. And as it expanded and with our encouragement, we have today two stores who have large kosher sections uh, staffed by full-time mashgichim. The Chabad has been the, the forerunner in establishing a, a, an air of Judaism around here and getting uh, kosher food in some of the major grocery stores. Today we have one of the most vibrant grocery stores like Smith's and Albertsons who provide kosher meat. Who would believe that we could come here, order anything we want or pick up anything we want, whether it's fresh meat, canned goods and, and your frozen foods, kosher and pop foods, everything you want. For us to open up this uh, kosher department with you know Rabbi Har Harlick supervision, it means the world to the people that keep kosher. We have drawn people from all over Las Vegas to come here to shop because we have the biggest selection here. Chabad does everything, and that's what makes it so special. When there's a shiver call to make, Chabad is there. When there's a hospital visit to make, Chabad is there. We reach out to all Jews, no matter what situation they may find themselves. Whether you're someone that may be in a hospital, or you may be incarcerated, or you may be in a senior citizen home, or you just may be someone who's down on your luck, whether you have a gambling problem, an alcohol problem, a drug problem. We want to bring them a little bit uh, joy to make them feel that there's someone who cares for them during their difficult, challenging times. I hit my peak of my addiction in Las Vegas, and it took me, it really took me until I met Rabbi Harlick to realize that I needed help. 
So I received a call one day that there was a person who was really down on his luck, he lost all his money gambling, and I spent some time talking to him. He found me a place to stay. I was homeless, I literally was homeless. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. Sometimes you could just, just listening to somebody and saying that you care really makes a difference in their life. I can just say to anybody who is in need or needs help, never to be scared to ask because it's around the corner and it's here at Chabad. For 25 years, Chabad has been a great part of the Jewish community. Uh, when I was practicing law, Rabbi Harlick was one of the first uh, clergymen to ever help me with a case. I had a client that uh, would not take food except from kosher hands and he made sure that uh, that man ate and uh, that was very important. At Chabad we believe it's from birth to death, from the cradle to the grave. One of the other things that we really involved is to make sure that everyone could get a proper Jewish burial. Chabad has been very positive. If I need anything, anytime, they're always there. If one is unable to do a burial, another one's available. If I have a family that needs legal assistance in getting a burial taken place, they're always there. Many times that you run into it, it's not just doing the burial. You need to get the legal authority to do the burial. They have no family, they're all alone. And we've numerous times have to go into court as a representative of this individual to be able to get the court permission to do that. We did a burial for a man that had no family. Rabbi Harlig made the arrangements to do the burial and he brought a minion to witness the burial itself. That stands out probably foremost to me, how important it is to make sure that things are done right and somebody's not buried alone. We go through the process to make sure that anyone who's Jewish and wants to have a proper Jewish burial, they have the opportunity to do that. The future of the Jewish people are the children, because if you don't have children who are educated, uh, there'll be no future of the Jewish people. And therefore, one of the emphasis we always put, and Chabad is always taught, is about educating the youth. Desert Torah Academy is an accredited school where children can learn half a day Judaic studies, half a day secular studies. We actually started off with five kids the first year. Every year, we'd go up another grade, and pretty much it became like that. We, we opened, you know, our preschool started to grow. So the threes, the fours, the fives, then we opened up a first grade, then we realized that the community was really ready for a you know, full-blown Jewish day school. I think what speaks to the parents in the community or families that are moving to town is the individualized attention. We don't just look at a kid as a number. We know the families, we know the families well, and the teachers, our staff, and administration really care about the students. I feel that kids thrive here because we have such hands-on staff and teachers that really go the extra mile and care. And really notice if the kid is having a bad day or having a hard time with a certain thing and we really focus on not only reaching the average kid but the kid who might be behind the kid who might be ahead trying to challenge everybody on their own level and you know really reaching that individual student um, is what shines here. I'm very very pleased and very happy with the level of care the safety and security of the school. We know our children are cared for, they're safe, they're being provided with solid academics. They know their teachers love them, they do feel cared for, they feel like they're learning, and again, as a parent, that's exactly what we want for our children. Kids are happy to be here. They want to learn, and I think if kids are happy, that they can learn anything. Desert Tour Academy is a great school. We have lots of materials to learn, and we learn a lot of things. It's a really cool gym, lots of activities, and great teachers. It's really about the child as a complete unit. What does that child need to succeed in life? Now, thank God, with over 260 kids to date, this will be our first 12th grade graduating class. The school, well, it, uh, it has a special place in my heart to see with 300, I think, children is uh, a miracle come true. We're very generous when it comes to scholarship because we feel that if a parent is lacking the means, why should a child not have the opportunity to have the, the education because the parents don't have the means? Therefore, we make sure that no child is turned away due to the lack of funds. It's really an unbelievable, unbelievable thing here for the community and for everyone that graduates here and gets the opportunity to come to school here every day. We believe that if you really want to grow in Yiddishkeit, you have to be educated. And therefore, we put a lot of emphasis on adult education. They have classes at all of the Chabads in many different attributes of Judaism. I'm actually working with Chabad of Summerlin with regards to a program there, talking about Jewish traditions. They have over 50 people that are at the program, which I think is amazing, which is telling me that they are a great impact on the community. People can get a complete Jewish education, and they don't even need to ask much. Just make a little inquiry at their local Chabad 
on and it will be poured on them just like a waterfall. We are talking about this week's Torah portion as well as socializing with Jewish college students at UNLV. To me personally, it's just a way for me to explore Judaism. The door is always open, they're so welcoming. It's definitely a home away from home. When I uh, lost my beloved wife, Yaffa, about eight years ago, I wanted to have a Torah study. And uh, Rabbi Harling was the person I went to. Everybody that's part of the Torah study knows that it's a time to really reflect. Rabbi Harling is making that happen. It's like a little bit of an oasis in the desert that we learn Torah in the middle of a busy surgical week or in the middle of his busy week. My eyes have really been open to the depths of Judaism and what it has to offer. There's a Chabad center near you that will give you a class. So come, learn, educate yourself, which I'm sure is going to cause you to grow in your spiritual connection, your spiritual commitment to God. Chabad puts a lot of emphasis when it comes around the holiday time, because we know the way that you could really educate your children and to perpetuate the Jewish people is to make a, a big deal uh, when it comes to the holiday. So that's why Chabad does these great grand menorah lightings, what we hold around town, to emphasize the importance of the holiday and to bring Jewish pride. I participate with Chabad when they come up and light the menorah candles for Hanukkah at the uh, governor's office. The governors who have been in office, they really appreciate it. One of the most fun things I've ever done with Rabbi Harlig and the Chabad is lighting the menorah in downtown Las Vegas. Not only do locals uh, show up for the lighting of the menorah, but a lot of tourists. I've been lighting Hanukkah candles down there on Fremont Street with Rabbi, going up in lifts. One The first time with Sheldon Adelson and my husband when he was mayor. The rabbi uh, puts on a wonderful Hanukkah ceremony downtown on Fremont Street, and people look forward to coming down there and participating in the lighting of the menorah. The fact that they've been doing this here for 25 years is absolutely amazing, and the Sin City has become a Jewish city. We actually have a Jewish community that comes out together, and it's really amazing. Doing a public celebration really is what inspires the child or what the child remembers. And when he gets older or she gets older, they want to make sure that they're able to continue celebrating that with their family. My congratulations to 25 years of Chabad here in Las Vegas. Hopefully you'll have another 25 and then another 25 after that and another 25 after that. I can't think of anything better to donate money to and to donate your energy to than a religious institution that really makes the community a better place in which to live. To have eight centers of Chabad teaching, it's amazing. They do a fantastic job. It's just a wonderful celebration and we're really so proud of of, uh, this gala and everybody that belongs to Chabad. I want to thank all of our supporters for everything they've given us in the past over the last 25 years. And I want you to realize that by you helping Chabad, you're not helping one individual person, you're helping an entire world. And thank you. Although we're here tonight celebrating our 25th anniversary and we're looking back, the truth is at Chabad, we don't like to look back, we like to look forward. We're already planning, what are we going to do new? What new activities are we going to bring to town? What new centers are we going to up? What new classes are we going to run? So with the help of my colleagues, and with all the help of financial supporters, the next 25 years is going to be a lot greater than the first 25 years. <music>